Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners podcast, we're talking about all the tips and hacks to make your business successful. Why? Because why not? I'm just some guy with a mic, but I hope you get something out of this. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, WCR, and uh, WCR Nation. What's up? Have a look around. If it's your first time here, check it out. How do you like the place? Just decorated. Uh, No, uh, look around. Uh, We have three years of content, 165 plus episodes for you to just watch, listen, or binge anywhere podcasts are available or on YouTube. Check it out. Make sure if you're watching this on YouTube that you give us that thumbs up on the video comment because the comments have been going down. Share the content because that's the thing I'm supposed to say. But more importantly, if you want to be one of the cool kids, one of the nation, do all that stuff and put your orders in through me. Shameless plug. I'm a sales rep. That's what I do. That's what I'm here for. Uh, My number directs 862-312-2026. Uh, ask questions, text me, say what's up, tell me you hated the episode, tell me you love the episode, it doesn't matter, but more importantly, make sure you put your uh, orders in through me, any window cleaning supplies I can do, that's how I make cheddar, and that's how you virtual high five me, uh, because you're just that awesome, and because uh, sometimes you have to do the ridiculous, we're making stickers that actually say, cool kids certified. So if you put your order in through me, you're going to get a sticker that is a special, limited edition Cool Kids sticker, because why not? Um, but again, 862-312-2026 is my number. Thank you to everybody who is an awesome, cool kid. If you're texting me, uh, put it all in your cart and be like, yo, Jersey, let's pull the trigger. At the end of this episode, I'll give you a code for 5% off. You can use that too. So yeah, make sure to check that out. Today on Nation, we're actually going to be talking about the tips and tricks slash hacks that I think you need to know. It's more like the lessons that you need to know, the takeaways, the ideas, but you know that doesn't rank very well on uh, SEO. So we're going to say it's the tips and hacks, and it's not hacks on how to clean a window, but hacks on how to have a successful company. Um... I do want to start off by saying I saw something online uh, the other day, and I didn't post it because I thought it wasn't the time and uh, might upset people. Sometimes I walk on eggshells like that. But it said that if you are not making money in 2020, then you are bad at business. And it got me thinking. That's really, really true. I know there's a lot of us who have had interesting years, but... All of us should have pulled out by now, right? We should have epic years, biggest on record. We should be back to being absolutely dominating our market. Uh, This time when I'm recording this is actually, gosh, August. So you're getting into summer, which is our slowdown for a lot of services. But you should be out of it. First off, I want to question you. Are you... Making excuses for why you're not killing it? Or are you out there killing it? Like, I just talked to somebody the other day, and this is what made me possibly think about it. I'm not putting up names. But uh, he or she said um, that uh, they just aren't making any money. They're just not doing it. It's just not. They're waiting for COVID to be done and all this other stuff. And I said, why are you waiting? What are you waiting for? Well, you know, it's it's got to be done. People are no, it's that no people are uncertain. There are always going to be people who don't, you know, use you at that particular time. But it's back. You should be out there busting your hump. If people are saying no to you, work twice as hard. So, it kind of got me thinking. There's a lot of like life lessons in business. There's a lot of tips and hacks to have a successful business. And here's some of them. And again, I'm just some dude who saved my pennies and bought a microphone for my computer. So I'm just some guy. So, you know, if these don't work for you, I'm probably wrong. You can tell me. It's okay. I'm a big boy. But these are the ones that I really, really, really think help in business, and a lot of people kind of forget about them. 
And I'm going to start with one. The first one is going to be giving expectations. Now, if you're a company that A, either receives a lot of negative reviews, or if you get people that aren't coming back to you, or if you're not getting referrals, at least 50% of your jobs are coming in referral-wise, there's a couple issues. And one of them is you're not giving people expectations. They're paying you money for something that they have expectations. Everybody has expectations with every purchase they've ever made ever. If you go buy a watch, you either have the expectation, oh, it'll do fine, it'll keep time, or you have the expectation that people look at it and be like, dang, you got a Rolex? Or you have the expectation that you got a piece of jewelry. This thing will go great with my suit. This will go great with that, that new button up I got. Everybody has expectations. If you get a watch and not one person says, whoa, you got that nice fancy new watch? Then you're kind of bummed. You're kind of bummed, right? Because that was one of your expectations. If you have an expectation that you bought a car because it's so fast, man, that new Supra, that thing is fast. You get the new Supra and you go, oh, it is not fast. Unfortunately, it is not fast at all. Now all of a sudden, you're upset with that purchase. If you're a car guy, which I'm not, you can find a ton of Supras with like under 10,000 miles because people got them and they're like, I got the Supra. And they're like, this isn't a Supra. Like This is just a exploited car, right? If you don't get what you expect, you're mad at your purchase. Now, here's an example. If you're pressure washing, say, uh, some slate or block or tile or enclosure or something, you're pressure washing them. And if you don't tell somebody, hey, so when I'm done, this will look amazing, but it will not and never will look brand new. It's going to look great, but again, I'm pressure washing, which I'm cleaning it. I'm not making it look new. If you don't tell them that or something to that degree, eventually you'll find somebody who is not happy with what you did. You'll do a great job. Like, man, did you see it before? It was garbage. They get it now and it's not garbage, but it's still 20-year-old patio pavers. They look like 20-year-old patio pay. People are done and they're like, ugh, I wouldn't hire them again. They didn't, they didn't make this look how I expected, right? When somebody complains about your company, it's because some part of their expectations weren't matched. They weren't met, right? They're not happy with your staff. They had expectations that you're going to treat them like a, a queen or a king. You're going to come in their house and respect everything. And you didn't, maybe you didn't take your shoes off. Oh, they're mad at that because they didn't get what they expected. So letting them know what to expect sounds cliche and it sounds dumb. And it's like, well, I don't have to explain everything, but it stops you from ever getting a bad review. It stops you from ever having disappointed customers. It increases your referral rate hugely and it increases your return rate. So letting people know what to expect is big. Just try to get on top of that. I'm telling you, a lot of people don't think about that, but it is very, very important. Another big one is people will return for the service or the experience that they receive. When somebody buys a service from you, window cleaning, pressure washing, whatever, they're relieving a pain point. I hate cleaning windows. I have dirty windows and my mother-in-law is coming over. My house is green. I got a letter from my HOA. My pool enclosure is slippery because it's all algae, right? Those are those pain points that we're taking care of. But somebody returns to you and schedules frequently because of the experience that they received. Now, I know a lot of us go, yeah, I'm a window cleaner. I clean bird poop off windows or I clean, you know, stinky grease off of dumpsters. Absolutely, we do. That's the pain point part. That's why they called you in the first place. But for the same reason that when you buy a new iPhone, think about this. When you get a phone, a new phone, which I do not have, if you want to put your order in through me, maybe I'll get one someday. Uh, No, but when you get a new iPhone or any kind of, especially Apple, there's plastic covers on everything, right? You have peeled plastic. You buy a new monitor, you peel the plastic. You get a new remote control, you gotta peel the plastic. Any of that stuff. But I 
phones, and Apple products have more plastic than anything. Front and the back and the sides and the this and the that. Because when you open up their double-lined box with no seams on the white. If you ever notice that all the seams are hidden, it's just one big piece, crisp white with a single logo. Ooh, I'm getting tingly thinking about it. You slide that box open and there it is. There's your phone covered in plastic with tabs all over it. Do you think they put that plastic there only for the fact that it protects from getting scratched? No, I can see putting it on the screen, but it's on the back. It's on the side. There's different tabs that open. There's like semi-glued tabs that are open. Everything is easy to peel. Why is that? It's the experience of opening that product. It's getting the new iPhone and peeling that off to seeing that super glossy mirror finish, right? Flipping it over, doing the same on the back. It's the reason their box is as important as their product. When you take the phone out, the charger is nestled in. And there's a little tab, you gotta pick the tab up and it pulls the whole thing, slides perfectly because the tolerances are so close. All it is is a, a, a sticker you're probably not going to put anywhere. It's a manual, manual you're surely not going to read. And a bunch of other stuff about uh, what the components are registered with the state and with the country you live in. But they make it so that it's amazing. Who hasn't gotten a box? And went, oh, this box is too heavy. They're still stumping in there. You're ripping the box apart just to find out. It's empty. It's just the box. That is the experience. That's the experience. And we can do that too. We can do that ourselves with what we do. We can create an experience for people. And an experience is why somebody comes back. An experience is the reason they tell their friends. Because if their expectation, right, playing off the first one, is that they're going to have clean windows and you're not going to steal from them and the price is going to be what you said it was, they just got what they expected. They're not going to go out and tell it, hey, Sue, I had this company. They were great. They did absolutely everything I thought they would do. When? That's boring. That's boring. No, but what an experience creates is a feeling. And the feeling is why we have memories and why we attach things. Think about that. Think about like back in the day, right? Maybe your first girlfriend or the first you know crush you had or your first uh ice cream or that one place you went every summer with the family that is a feeling that is an experience you can have an experience and you can have somebody feel something which means now they are connected how do you do that you can make sure to give them a thank you card you can make sure to give them a little treat i know that uh brandon vaughn said that his company, on their survey in the beginning, hey, tell us a little bit about the job, we'll come and bid it. What's your favorite snack? Funny question, kind of gets people off thinking, ah, Snyder's pretzels. When the person comes to their house, on the way to the, from the uh, office to the job, they grab a bag of Snyder's pretzels. And they show up, and they give them this bag, a dollar, dollar fifty bag of pretzels. And they, hey, you said this was your favorite snack, right? All right, let me go ahead, walk around the place. You enjoy those pretzels. I'm going to take a look at the property. I'll come back with a price, and we'll go from there. It just costs you $1.50 to blow someone's socks off. To blow them away. To blow them away. If I send in a proposal to a company, and it's an unsolicited bid, but it's a, pro a project or presentation folder, Everything is lined up, boom, 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 easy. You open it up and it's just made perfectly. Everything is in there, high gloss. There's envelopes, there's your business card that feels like a million bucks. There's a, you know, beer opener card in there. You got everything with high gloss pictures and right on front is the proposal packet. You open that up. A full gloss brochure, it doesn't matter what it is, it gives you the, it gives you the goosebumps. Now you're a property manager, you open that up, the next guy just gave you some carbon copy form or wrote it on a napkin, right? You gave them this thing, this book, this experience. Who are they gonna remember? You bring a property management company cookies with your logos on it, brownies. Anything that just sets you aside, all of a sudden it's an experience. 
hey, those are the guys that gave me the brownies. You know, I was having such a bad day, and all of a sudden, there's like a little sweet treat. I'm like, oh, thanks a lot, XYZ window cleaning, right? Create an experience, and people will have a connection with you like nothing else. It's the guys that go above and beyond. It's the one that say thank you presents. What if every customer that you did, you went on to like send Jim. We'll throw send Jim in there. Great product. I like it. Uh, great product. If you you know ever haven't had a chance, check it out. But what they do is just like a couple other websites do with their uh, gifts. Now, for $5, you can send out brownies that just say thank you. Or you can send out cupcakes, or you can send a whatever, snack, or dessert, or anything. What if you even did that in-house, if you had the time of the office staff? What if you sent them a little company with your XYZ, or a little cookie, or a brownie or something with your logo on it that just said thanks again? We had a great time. I hope you did too. If there's anything we could do for you, let us know. They get it two days later. They've already forgotten about you. The windows are clean. Now they get a snack. Boom. Experience. They've connected now with you. What? You're never going to believe it, Mod. This company I hired to clean my windows, they came in. They gave me pretzels in the beginning, you know, because I said, you know, I love Snyder's pretzels. It's like my thing. Then they sent me a cookie the next day with a gift, you know, a little, little card, handwritten card. I said, thanks. Thanks a lot for everything. Ah, these guys. These guys are so nice. Now, all of a sudden, there's a connection. You've given them an experience. So think about that. Create an experience. Uh, number three on the list of tips and hacks or tips and tricks, whatever you're going to call it, is uh, respect their time. I'm going to tell you there's nothing worse than when I have somebody over at the house doing a service and they're sitting in the backyard eating lunch or they're sitting out doing something uh, on their phone or they're taking a break in the shade. These are things that in your brain you think, well, yeah, of course. We need that. I need a break. But how long does a, a, a job take you? An hour? Two hours? Three hours? Maybe on the big ones? You don't need to necessarily take a lunch in the middle of their job. You don't necessarily need to take a break in the middle of their job. You don't need to be on your phone not doing work. Here's the thing. If you respect their time, they'll never notice it. If you don't respect their time, they will notice it. God, this guy's still here, man. It's been four hours. I'm trying to get stuff done. I don't want somebody in my house all the time, right? Not just the COVID stuff, but they just don't want somebody taking up all their time. What are you doing? Why is it taking you so long? You're not respecting my time. Respecting someone's time is not noticed. Not respecting someone's time is noticed. And think about the last time you had home services done. Somebody at your house doing something. I'm telling you, you're going to remember if they didn't respect your time. It's the same thing with um, taking uh, respect in not only their time, but their possessions, their castle, their, um, you know, um, their pride. All of that comes into play. That's why we take our shoes off. Some people put on booties. That's cool too. I like to take my shoes off because I say I'm walking into your home. People take off shoes when they go into someone's home, right? Um, respecting their, their home, letting them know something's awesome or cool or beautiful, or man, this is great. I love this back design. Well, we'll get started. Blah, blah. You're telling them that you also respect what they've built, their empire, their, their home is their castle. You're invading their space, respecting their time, respecting their possessions, respecting what they've built and their pride goes a long, long way. Because if you don't, you walk in and go, oh man, that color is bad. Huh? I can't believe you painted that wall that color. Well, I'll go ahead and start. They go, what in this, right? Expletive. <laughs> what in the crap snacks did that guy just say to me? Like you just insulted their castle. You insulted their, their home. Well, nobody would do that. Nobody's in there doing that. But go the opposite way. Remember, we're creating experience. We're blowing away their expectations, creating an experience, and we're respect, respecting their pride and their time and everything else. Remember, we're building a overall experience. Number four on the tips and tricks and hacks for building a successful window cleaning company is focusing on the relationship over cleaning. I get this. This is one of my favorite questions to ask. I always say, What's your USP? 
your unique selling point. What's, what's, what's the reason people buy you? Why does somebody buy you over buying me? Why does somebody buy you over buying your competition? A lot of people go, ah, man, I, I am the best at cleaning windows. I, when I leave, the windows are perfect. They are nothing in the tracks. I clean the screens. Ah, they're clean. Mm hmm. Everybody does. Everybody cleans the window. That's why they're hired. Nobody is a window cleaner who goes to a house, doesn't clean the window, and is like, yeah, there you go. So there is no such thing as the most clean. There's either clean or not clean. If there's still streaks and smears on it, that's not clean, right? You're selling on the wrong point. No one's buying you because your windows are so clean. No one gives two dumps, by the way. No one gives two dumps about how clean their windows are. They don't. What they care about is the experience. What they care about is who you are. Even if it's not you and it's a, a manager or an operations officer or something like that, the reason that they are hiring you is because there's one you. Now, if you can build a relationship so that you are so friendly with that person that they've connected, again, with the experience itself, but more or less with you, all of a sudden you become what's not a business and you become a person. If your company name is XYZ Window Cleaning, people are only hiring XYZ Window Cleaning because they found you in the book or they did something or the whatever, right? It's just that they hired you for a very small reason and if somebody gave them the right coupon, they would leave you. But if there's only one jersey, if there's only one you, they're hiring it because they always get you. They hire you. This other guy said he'd take 20 bucks off. This other guy said he'd do it for $100 left. Yeah, but it's not you. It's not Jersey. It's not Tom. I'll give you an example. My operations officer for many, many years, his name was Gary. Uh, great, great guy. Uh, ended up moving to Hawaii, so he couldn't really work for me anymore. Uh, but we were at a guy's house, and we had done this guy. He was a doctor. We did his house every single month, once a month for at this point probably six years every single every single month for six years one day we had the flu running through our company and we were like four guys short so i was out cleaning windows now as you know i haven't cleaned windows in a long time i was the office kind of you know desk jockey for a while making things run well i'm out there i'm cleaning windows and the guy walks out with a check and he goes hey you guys did an awesome, awesome job. Thank you so much. And he's got the check in his hand. He's, oh, I could take that. No, actually, let me give it to Gary. I'm going to say hi to him, see how his uh, daughter's doing with her uh, schoolwork. I know she was having some issues. He literally walked the check over to my check, the guy who works for me, so that he gets the check and then ends up giving it to me in the end, so he could talk to him and find out about his daughter. They had a connection. They had a connection. The only reason that we did that job was because he had a connection with Gary who was there on that job every single time. Talked about the kids. They talked about the dog. They talked about their family. They did all that. All of a sudden, now his friend Gary was doing the windows. He would never leave us for a $5 discount. He would never leave us for a $20, $100 discount. It's the same reason if you have a friend right now that does anything. Say they do landscaping or pest control or anything they have their own business. You use them. You use that person for their, their business. Why? Maybe they don't even do that great of work. Maybe they're, you know, hey, they're as mediocre as anybody, but it's scary. It's Tom. It's George. You use them because they're your friend. You're almost obligated. Focus on the relationship, not the cleaning. You should not do crappy work, understand that. But you also need to focus on what relationship you're building. Because Michael Geller said it, said it if you know who that is. He said, "There's a, this is when he was a magician, so that's the magician reference. He said, there's a lot of magicians out there in the world. And they could hire any of them, ranging from a dollar to $10,000. But there's only one Michael Geller. 
If you make them want you and only you, then no one looks at the price. No one looks at the availability. No one looks at, you know, the date you could be there at the time. No one looks at anything but you. If they want only you, they will have only you. It's a pretty awesome idea, by the way. Uh, I do some private coaching, by the way. Uh, and our uh, waiting list sometimes can be up to months, months and months. But people don't necessarily care because they're only interested in the coaching if it's a coaching from me, you know. Maybe they have a relationship with them. It's great. They're not looking for coaches. They're only looking for me. So something to think about. Keep it in your head. Focus on the relationship, not the cleaning or whatever it is that you're actually doing. And uh, the number five thing or number one, however you want to count it, the tips, tricks, and hacks of having a successful company is remember that we are a luxury company, but we are removing pain. Now, in all of business, the number one thing that makes people act is pain. No human likes pain unless you're into that. And that's a uh, rule 36 or whatever from the internet that everything's a thing. I don't know what it is. Correct me down below in the comments if you know what it is. But most people, most, almost all, do not like pain, right? People will go, oh, give me this toothache. Oh, I got to get this thing just pulled. I got to get this tooth pulled, right? People will go and pull a tooth out of their head, which you know is painful, because there's more pain. I can stop the pain by having this little bit of pain. I can do this thing to stop the pain. Right? No one's out there getting their tooth pulled when it... No, teeth feel fine. Why don't we pull one just in case? No, you're creating pain. No one would do that. But what we're doing is we're taking a pain point. We're removing it. That's why somebody hires us. We're a luxury. So no one needs to hire us. Right? If somebody is poverty stricken and they don't know, you know, if they can buy anything more than mac and cheese this month, that's not a customer of ours because they don't have expendable income. They don't care that their windows are clean. They need to eat. Our customer is having their windows clean because they have some extra money or the pressure washing. They can get it done and they want it done. And you know something? Their pain point is they don't want to look at green algae. Their pain point is they hate cleaning windows. I uh, hate cleaning windows. You do it all and then all of a sudden the sun comes up and you got streaks and smears everywhere. I hate it. Maybe the mother-in-law is coming over. We talked about this just a little bit ago, right? Ugh, she's going to yell at me. She's going to mention everything. You know, I'm going to have dust. I have to dust. I have to dust the top of my ceiling fan because she will notice that, right? There's your pain point. What is someone's pain point? Why are they hiring you? Because... The reason they're hiring you, whatever the pain point is, is why they're hiring you. That's the reason they're going to give you money. That's the reason they're going to book with you. If their pain point is because, you know what, I'm on a storefront, the last guy, he never showed up. I don't know. I don't know if he was even here this month. He's in and out, and sometimes he comes, and sometimes he doesn't. It's just, I don't get it. And you come back over the top and go, yeah, we're the cheapest in town, too. They're going to go, okay. I don't care. All I want is somebody to come on time. It's what they said to you. Their pain point is not how much it costs. It's not how great you clean the windows. It's not anything. Their pain point and the reason they're hiring you the first time is to get rid of the pain point. And the pain point is they don't know when the person comes. The other person is not reliable. They hate it. If somebody says that to you, I don't even know when they were here. When were they here last? I just don't know. They, they, they just show up when they want. Ah, oh, it drives me crazy. Well, you know, here we put you on a weekly schedule. So you're either once a week, once every two weeks, or once every four weeks, regardless of weather. If the weather happens, you're still clean that week. We guarantee it. Wow. Wow. My pain point is not knowing if or when you're going to show up. And you just told me. It's guaranteed I'm not going to have that pain. If you're talking to a property manager, like, oh, you know, I, I have a thousand things to do, you know, on top of windows, I got to get the snow removal done and uh, we got to do the janitorial, but then we also got to get these new bushes put in. It's just driving me crazy. Now we're having problems with the parking lot. We're going to have to get that restriped and paved. Yeah. This person's got a lot of hats. They got a lot of, they're overwhelmed by everything going on, right? Oh man, that, that stinks, right? Uh, 
that's why you get paid the big bucks. LOL. Ha ha. They laugh. You laugh. They go, I don't think so. Well, here, let me tell you this. With Windows, I am one person. I will take this off your plate. You will never have to worry about your windows getting cleaned on time or at the price that we agreed on. You're never going to have to worry about an issue because if there's ever an issue or there's ever something you're not happy with, you have my cell phone. Shoot me a quick text. I will bring everybody back in force and we'll make it perfect for you every time. It's just something you'll never have to worry about again. That's how you sell to somebody. Their pain point is they're overwhelmed. Their pain point is that there's too much to do. What if I came over the top and said, hey, that sounds like you have so much to do. I mean, you are just running around like crazy. You're handling it all great though. Here's what we do. I'm gonna take the window cleaning. I'd love to give you a price for pressure washing. We also do snow removal. All of those services plus lot cleanup and we do nighttime janitorial or whatever the services you offer. We're going to do all that, put it on one bill, take care of all that. Now, all of a sudden, all those things you said you had to do, four of those services, we're going to take it. They're going to take care of it. And I'm telling you, now you have one number. If there's ever an issue with any of those services, you text me, call me, whatever you want. I will be back in a heartbeat to make it perfect. Whoa. Whoa. If I hire this guy, all of a sudden, four things that I'm worried about. Four different things I'm worried about. Wow, that's going to free up so much time. Now I can do other things. Now I can just breathe. Now maybe I can take a lunch because I'm not so busy. Take away a pain point and you will get yourself a customer. So I'm going to go over it one more time real quick. I got give expectations. People return for the experience. Respect their time, pride, property. Focus on the relationship over the cleaning and take away their pain point. Anyway, I hope you liked it. I hope you check out the other episodes of Nation, some better than others. But either way, there's a ton of content to follow, a ton of content to binge. More importantly, if you want to be a cool kid or one of the OGs, the original gangsters, part of the nation, any of the cliche things that I always talk about, put your orders in through me. I would genuinely, genuinely appreciate it. That is my digs. And the only way I make money is by putting in orders for you guys. It doesn't cost you any extra. Uh, it's as easy as I possibly can with a simple text. Hey, everything's in my cart jersey. The code is, tell me the code. All I do is confirm your address and card, tell you the amount. You say yes, and it's done. It's easy. This week's code is hack. <laughs> if you tell me hack, you don't have to call me a hack. But you, if you, if you, if you <laughs> tell me hack. You're going to get 5% off your order. So again, 862-312-2026. Thank you guys so much for putting in your orders for me. I know there's a lot of you that order, and I really, really genuinely appreciate it. So thank you very, very much. Um, yeah, that's it for this week. If you want uh, to have a better experience, if you want to have those tips and tricks, make sure to do them. Hopefully implement them. Hopefully it works out awesome. But more importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic.